today we're going to have a go at using electrolysis to remove rust. Now it's actually something I did about a year ago. Um, so when I was doing the experiments with the citric acid and the ultrasonic cleaner, I actually did one using electrolysis to remove rust then. And I'll be honest, the results were kind of mediocre. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed by them. And when you compare the results from, from that particular experiment with the citric acid ones, the citric acid was way better, it stripped the rust off way better and it gave you a better result. So at the time I, I wasn't happy with the footage, I wasn't happy with it all really and I just deleted it. Now I was speaking to a friend Craig this weekend, and thank you Craig, and he basically suggested I try again. <laughs> so he'd, he'd done it this last week and he had really good results from it. Now when I did it all that time ago, um, I had some teething issues and the first one was the transformers I was using. So that's a 12 volt transformer. It's an old thing from a Hornby setup or something. Um, but it overheated, um, smelled of burning and buzzed very, very loud. <laughs> so it wasn't happy being used for electrolysis. I'm not sure why. Um, I then stepped it down and used a six volt transformer, which seemed to work okay, but say the results were just, yeah, you know what I mean? Very, very good. Um, so I use that 6 volt one for doing electroplating when you don't need it to be low voltage um, and it works a treat for that but for electrolysis 6 volt just didn't seem to uh, to, to give the results. Um, so today we're actually going to go again and Craig assures me it'll be okay because I don't really want to damage my little heirloom, uh, I like this charger, um, but we're going to use a 12 volt car battery charger and it's going to be on the trickle charge setting, the low setting and he assures me it'll be fine. Very mate. <laughs> so we're going to use this one as, as our power source. Um, so all you need to do is get yourself a big old tub. So that mine's an old water tank. Let's say a bucket or anything will do really. Um, we're going to fill that up with water. So kind of fortunate because we're in the soft water area here. So we get decent cups of tea. And um, some soda crystals. So for the electrolyte we're going to basically mix soda crystals with the water. And that's it. We're going to keep it simple. Um, this stuff is about a quid for a kilo bag from any cheapo superstore, uh, supermarket, so you can get it from, from most of them. Um, and it's also good for degreasing as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to get our parts, I'm um, going to degrease them first, make sure there's as little dirt on them as possible before we start. Um, and then we're going to whack them in and see how it goes. Fingers crossed. I know it's blue, but in here is basically just a mix of soda crystals and, and water. Um, I just used it for something else before. Um, our little test experiment is going to be the trusty old disc. Now this poor old thing gets experimented on for everything. Uh, everything from citric acid to electrolysis. Ultrasonic cleaners, a lot. So uh, it's been stood for a year, it's good to start to it again. So I'm just trying to make sure there's no grease on there. I'm going to use this again. And then we've got a bit of bodywork. Um, it's a bit of inner wing from a bug uh, in the rear quarter. Uh, I'm going to give that a try as well. So I'm just going to degrease them all. Oh, I thought I'd do this thing as well. I don't even know what it is, to be honest. If anyone knows what it is, it would be really cool if you could just tell me in the, uh, the comments below. I'm kind of curious to see how much of that will come off. So it's quite heavy there. Right, I've taken this experiment outside. Uh, so I'm going to put about half a kilo soda crystals in. Right, got a big old chunky bit of steel. I cleaned a bit so I've got good, good contact. And to that we are going to connect our positive. And then again, I've cleaned the disc with a bit of sandpaper so we've got good contact. That's our negative, so the bit we're going to clean is connected to the negative. Put the top on. I blow up my charger, I'm blaming Craig. Right, it's set to trickle. We'll come back in 24 hours, fingers crossed. I've a nice clean disc. 
Okay, it's been 24 hours. I haven't cheated, I've not even sneaked a peek. So, uh, the great reveal, we'll do it together. Ooh, that's kind of gross looking. <laughs> At least they haven't touched in the water. Hey, it's not bad that. Not kind of as good as I hoped. There's a lot of stuff on there which is uh, is stuck because of the fire. It's kind of plastic. But the uh, bits that just have surface rust on are kind of completely clear, and the heavy rust is still there, really. <laughs> Check that out. That's pretty nasty, isn't it? I imagine there's been probably quite a lot from in between the uh, the vents on the disc that's come out. So I'll just give it a quick clean up. Uh, just wiped it with a rag, and that's kind of the finish. So the bit there I cleaned with the emery paper, and the the bit that's cleaned uh, the surface for from has left it kind of dull metal. But it does look pretty clean. And again, the back. Uh, the sludge kind of scraped off really easily, uh, and then I just hit it quickly with a bit of sandpaper just to give it a bit of bare surface again. It's so got a nice good contact. So that's been sandpapered, so it's vaguely clean. And uh, the bottom I've left as it was, so I've got surface rust here, and quite heavy surface rust that started to pit. And I'm kind of curious to see how much of that it'll actually get off. And uh, the back's just got a bit as well. We'll leave that for a day and see how we get on with that one. So I'll give it a quick rub with a bit of sandpaper just to see uh, what actually comes off. And most of it came off actually. So it's just left like a black deposit behind. So we're going to check that back in for the day and see if it clears any more of that away. I'm also going to put this bad boy in. Now, obviously this sort of stuff you can clean up quite easily manually. But when you get around these tricky corners and bits where it's folded and double plated, can't get in there at all with uh, anything like a wire brush. So we're going to chuck that in and see how that does. So you see in there it's all rusty inside. Fingers crossed if we can do this without shorting everything out. Alrighty, let's have a look what we've got today. So our uh, test plate, if you want to call it that. Looking pretty good. Hey, check it out. Let's get the sandpaper on it, see what happens. and it rubs off quite easily. However, if you just get a bit of sandpaper on the surface rust itself, that rubs off quite easily too. Obviously when you've got a tricky to get to places, uh, like in the seams and stuff, it's, uh, it's a different story because you just can't get in there. But again, it doesn't actually remove it as such. Mmm, yummy. Clean that off. Okay, it's nice and clean again. Positive back on there. Our last little experiment for the week. Oop. We're going to try this. Now, I'm not sure if you can actually see in there. This is, um, I think somebody actually made it. I was going to use it as, got it to, to use as an oil breather box. Somebody's actually used it for water. Um, and it's full of nasty, horrible oxides in there. So I couldn't really use it for oil in the engine. Curious to know what's going to happen with that one. And at the same time, this random thing, which I still don't know what it is. Again, if anybody does know what it is, what it's from, I'd love to know. Just gonna use a second little wire. Clean the little bit there, look. And drop that in. Ah, oh, wet glove. I'm just gonna connect that to that. Two for the price of one. Right, so let's have a look at this. So 
So, pretty much the same really. It's uh, all gone black and carbony. We'll give that a rub in a second. How's it got inside of here? All right. It's really heavily caked on still. And it's still red rusty kind of colours as well. Uh, I suppose it's removed some of the rust. Uh, there's still some rubbing to be done there for sure. That's whether it's converted it all or made it inert, I'm not sure. Sorry for the angle, but we're hiding from the rain today. <laughs> so, this has now been in for two days. I don't think, looking at that, it's a great change from one to two days, to be honest with you. And the box of doom, yeah, it still grows in there, look. I think I've made a reasonable effort at removing rust with electrolysis and I followed the, the guidance of a friend who's done it, he said successfully. So we used basically the same power, the same uh, charger and the same quid's width of uh, soda crystals um, and I guess that's the advantage is it's cheap. Personally, I don't think it's that good. Um, I mean, if, you go, if you're taking slight surface rust off like we had on the disc here, it goes back to a, a relatively clean nice metal, it takes it back to a grey metal. Um, but if it's slightly pitted or it's slightly heavier rust, it just doesn't seem to do a very good job. And basically you end up rubbing it with sandpaper to clean it back, which you could have just done in the first place and, and got it back to metal, it would have been no effort. So it's kind of like, what's the point? I don't really understand. <laughs> uh, when it comes to the, the breather box, I don't think it did a very good job at all. So it didn't take hardly anything out of there that I wanted to remove from it. Um, and I thought that was probably the most disappointing thing. I'm not sure if it's because it's enclosed or something, I don't know. And if there's anybody out there that's watched this and they, they've seen something that I'm doing that could be improved on, please put in the comments. Um, we'll have a go again and say I'm, I'm happy to try this stuff again if, uh, if there's a better way of doing it. However, personally, if you're stripping rust, citric acid is the way to go. Or at least this is the best route I've found so far. Uh, it's relatively cheap. I, I remember it's about 15, 20 quid for a massive bag uh, from eBay. Um, I mean, that bag's still half full and I've done loads with it so it goes a long way. Um, I guess the biggest disadvantage other than the slight increase in cost is that once you've stripped something with citric acid it flash rusts very very fast so you may have to make sure you get all the, all the acid off completely um, and then you protect your metal uh, whereas the electrolysis stuff doesn't do that so much because it's just obviously in water really. Um, but yeah if you're prepared to do that um, I personally think that the citric acid did a way better job. It cuts deeper, it takes more, more rust off, um, thicker rust off as well, and it doesn't leave the same residues behind. So that would be my choice. Um, again, if you can improve it, let me know. Cheers, guys.